we said that I didn't have quite enough uh, overjet on the central incisor, so I'm going to increase the overjet there now just by softening the wax all the way around the central incisor. And you can see that as I'm using my instrument, um, the wax is becoming molten, and I'm going out underneath the tooth there so that the, I've got it good and softened so I'll be able to move that tooth the way that I want. I'll also soften it a little bit on the lingual surface so that I'll be able to move it buccolingually very easily. Now I'm going to just use a little pressure. I'm going to move the tooth out there a little bit, put it back on my rim, check it um, against the rest of the teeth here, and I'm looking to make sure that my overjet is even between my central incisors and my lateral incisors, and that's looking a little bit more even to me now that I'm looking there. We'll proceed then to start setting the, the uh, maxillary anterior teeth on the opposite side. If your maxillary rim is contoured properly, it should show you on the facial surface where you want the facial surface of the corresponding tooth to be. When I'm taking out the wax, you can notice I'm using a good finger rest so I don't slip and cut myself. Every year we have a few incidences where people don't use a finger rest when they're using a knife or a sharp instrument um, and they cut themselves. You don't want to be doing that. So then I'm going to soften up the wax, get it so that it's in a molten state. You won't want just the surface layer softened, you want some of the wax underneath softened as well. Then I'm going to take one of the teeth uh, from my card, take the maxillary incisor, and I'm going to try and sit that in there so that the incisal edge is even with the corresponding tooth that's already been set. I'll move that a little bit there. I'll view it from above to make sure that it's close to being symmetrical. Um, and I'll also put it back on my cast and take a look and see how it relates to my uh, ridge below here because again that should have been contoured properly as well. And you can see I can just use my instrument here to sort of pry it apart so that the overjet looks approximately the same as what it does on the opposite side. Watch that your incisal edges are relatively flat. And make sure that you don't end up with a diastema as you see here. So I've got the tooth close to where I want it to be. I'm just going to soften up the wax a little bit more, move it closer to the other central incisor, and straighten up the incisal edge a little bit. Okay. And again, remember, as you're removing the wax, use your finger rest so that you don't uh, have a mishap and poke yourself with a sharp. I'm going to soften that, make the wax molten again, and set the lateral incisor, remember incisal edge, slightly uh, half a millimeter above the edge of the central incisor. The neck of the tooth should be depressed a little bit so it's not quite as prominent at the neck of the tooth. Look from above, Take a look at the symmetry with the opposite side. Make sure that the neck is, is it more prominent. You can do that by sort of angling the denture around and looking from all different uh, perspectives. Then also don't forget to put it back on your uh, articulator and check your overjet with the uh, adjacent tooth and also on the opposite side to see that you're getting about the same amount of overjet from side to side. Again, you can use some sort of straight edge to check that your lateral incisor is slightly above the edge of the um, central incisor. So lateral incisor slightly above, make sure that that neck is not too prominent. Next we're going to remove some wax and set the last of the anterior teeth. Again, making sure that we've got the proper axial alignment and the position of the incisal edge. Remember that for the canine, the cervical portion is tilting backwards, so the cervical portion is slightly distal, uh, not dramatically so, but a little bit, and also that the neck is a little bit more prominent when we're setting that. Okay, so when we look from above, you should see the prominence of that neck. We're also going to take away a little bit of this wax on the lingual surface so it's easier for us to move uh, the teeth where we want. And again, I'm using a finger rest whenever I'm using my knife. We'll soften that wax and blend it in with those teeth. 
try not to get too much wax on the teeth uh, at this point uh, because we're going to be having to clean that off later and it makes it a lot easier to, to uh, move teeth and set teeth if there's not a lot of wax on them. So you can see here that I've got that slight distal inclination of the canine tooth. It's probably maybe a little bit down too far, so I'm actually just going to push it up a little bit into the wax a little bit more so it's not down too far. Uh, that may have made the neck a little less prominent there, so I'm going to actually just heat that up and push the neck out from underneath. Okay, so I get a little bit more prominence there, and again, I'm just going to move that up so it's not too long. Okay, it should look symmetrical with the opposite side, and again, should be slightly lower than the incisal edge on the lateral incisor. When we look from the front here, you can see for the, the um, lingualized occlusion, we start off with uh, zero overbite. It often makes it a little bit easier to get balancing contacts if that's what you desire on a lingualized setup. Again, I'm going to clean up a little bit of the wax around the lingual surface of those teeth, just so I don't have so much bulk. Um, when I go to set the posterior teeth, I may have to move the anterior teeth just a little bit. I want to keep things neat and tidy so there's very little work left to do when I'm finished.